This is a continuation of my prior video. And as I was stating before, the last bit that I said was Miss Clinton had stated that no doubt it seemed like the, the weaponry that took the plane down must have come from Russia. And I said, the weaponry that ISIS possesses does come from the United States. I did say that they were trained in Jordan at a secret base. We armed them. You also heard Ms. Clinton say that we needed to help arm the Ukrainians also so they could put up a better fight uh, against the Russians. Yeah. So, who stands to benefit the most? Continuation. And we have to go with what we know. I said Russia supplies a lot of natural gas and has a bunch of resources in their country, and they do. And as you know, Ukraine was way behind on their bill. As of June, they were. So they owed Russia a bunch of money and they've been running up a credit tab that they hadn't been able to pay for their gas, natural gas. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, appointed to board of directors of Burisma Holdings, the largest Ukrainian private gas producer. So, you have the largest private gas producer, Burisma, and you have Gazprom, the Russian gas giant. Two competing entities. Correct? Yes. The United States does not back Russia. The United States backs Ukraine. See? Burisma, not Gazprom. You heard Hillary Clinton say, all their money they get mainly from their resources, Gazprom. So they're going to try to attack Gazprom. Bring down what they can make money off of, their resources. Biden is the new head of Burisma, the Holdings Legal Unit, and provides support for the company for international organizations, among international organizations. He will consult on matters of transparency, right, corporate governance, responsibility, international expansion, and other priorities with the aim of contributing to the economy and benefit the people of Ukraine. He is very, so very concerned about that. Daddy and Obama didn't have anything to do with getting little Biden Jr., this big position, did they? And it just happened to be in a place where they have a conflict with Russia. The chairman of the board of Burisma, Alan Apter, said the company's strategy is aimed at the strongest concentration of professional staff and introduction of best corporate practices. And we're delighted that Mr. Biden is going to join us to help us achieve these goals. And the White House denied the appointment could constitute a conflict of interest. Uh, Biden, Joe Biden, spokesperson, said the vice president endorses Burisma Holdings. Hunter Biden is a private citizen and a lawyer, so he has a degree which allows him to lie, as most lawyers do. And... The paid mouth liar, Jay Carney, also echoed that statement. Did not reflect an endorsement by the administration, by the president, or the VP. Let's see here. Biden has experience in public service and foreign policy. He is a director for the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition. 
Center for National Policy, and the Chairman of the Advisory Board for the National Democratic Institute. Billy Clinton, Bill the, I did not have sex with that woman, liar, Clinton, appointed him an executive director of e-commerce policy coordination under Secretary of Commerce Daly. He also served as honorary co-chair of the 2008 Obama-Biden inaugural committee. He's a counsel to Boyce, Schiller, and Flexner, national law firm based in New York. And Burisma was founded in 2002. Owns several Ukrainian oil and gas companies, including Esco, Avinch, and Par. They produce 11,600 barrels of oil equivalent in 13, and expected to increase by 35 to 40% in 14 this year. Gazprom has told Ukraine's Nafta Gaz that the company has switched to a prepayment system. The debt of Nafta Gaz amounts to 3.5. Oh, five billion, so there's a good reason to require prepayment from the Ukrainian company. <clears throat> and then, if Ukraine fails to pay, which that was a month ago, for June delivery, Gazprom will cut off supplies from June the 3rd. See? You get it? There was a threat made. You've been running on credit. You owe us this money. You ain't paid up. So from now on, you're going to prepay for what you get. No more credit. Now we go into Gazprom. Found in 89. It is a corporation now, retaining all its assets, partially privatized later on. The government holds a majority stake. Look at all this stuff they produced here. Number of subsidiaries in various industrial sectors. They have subsidiaries in finance, media, aviation. Major fields are in the Gulf of Ob, Siberia in the west part of that, and the Yamal Peninsula. And expecting to become the main producing region in the future. They possess the largest gas transport system in the world. 158,200 kilometers of gas trunk lines. We're going to have new projects. Nord Stream, South Stream. Look at all this. 2011, three years ago, they produced 513.2 billion cubic feet of natural gas. 17% of worldwide gas production. They are the largest extractor of natural gas in the world. You get it yet? You got it? The U.S. is trying to make Russia look very bad so that the U.S. can look very good, so that the European Union looks very good. Remember the Russians kind of put the clamps down on bombing in Syria? Yeah, you had old ba 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 bomb bomb iran mccain wanting to lob some in there on Syria. You had a host of people wanting to lob some against Syria. And they gave you the excuse that Syria and Assad were using those chemical weapons against their own people. And it turns out that uh, they didn't. It was the so-called rebels that actually did it. And you found out those were armed by the U.S. You know, a host of uh, mercenaries sent in there 
to try and overthrow that government. When you got told about a video, started all the crap and everything with the Muslims, you found out that was a lie. Benghazi was a lie. So, U.S., kill and overthrow. Now, scum in charge. Egypt, didn't kill him, overthrew him. Scum in charge. Saudi Arabia, we paid to defend them at all costs. That's why we don't produce our oil anymore, thanks to Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon back in the day. Yemen, we got some scum in there. Did a little stuff to them. Iraq, we went in there, killed him, overthrew them, took that over. We want to go here. These guys are our buddies. We want to go over here, too, but we've got to find a good excuse here. And then, right above our buddy here, Turkey, well, they're halfway buddies, but it is the Ukraine, see? Mm-hmm. Boy, if I was all on Europe over here, I'd be a little worried about the old good old USA and what they're doing over here. You're getting awful close to home over here, boys. Yeah. You better stand up, people. You see all of it? Can you see? All the way through here, all the way up into here, they're trying to get that right there. Don't think that that ain't still on the table. So you got here and here. Yeah, but you got to deal with these guys here to get this. And these guys here ain't going to let them get that. So they're stomping their foot on the ground saying, we can't get it. What are we going to do to get it? He threw a monkey wrench over here whenever we tried to do Syria too. We got to do something to make them look bad. Think about it. What do they gain Russia by shooting down the plane besides world condemnation? What do they get out of it? Nothing but condemned. Nothing but looking like a bad guy. Nothing but looking like killers. Who looks... Who gets something out of it? Who looks good to the world? The big USA who's condemning it all. Who's analyzing everything and pumping it out to you through the mainstream media. The European Union, where all your European papers and stuff over there assuredly are saying the same things, running in concert with the media in the United States. So, everybody's jumping on, saying these guys are nasty dudes. They killed a bunch of people. You get it yet? You got all kinds of other things. You, you can find like, a, oh, air traffic controller tweets from, I think he was a Spanish air traffic controller that they brought in. And he's saying stuff like, uh, the, you know, the Ukraines did it. You're hearing all kinds of crazy things like the plane was stuffed with dead bodies that were already decomposed and rotted. <clears throat> And all I can tell you is if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. And this definitely doesn't feel right. Why is it always a uh, Malaysian plane? This is two of them since March, right? I don't really have an answer for why is it, why is it a Malaysian plane two times this year. I'm going to have to think about that. But like I said about the original Malaysian flight, I believe that was blown up in pieces. Who knows? If those are decomposing bodies, maybe they came from the original uh, Malaysian plane that was disappeared since March. Maybe they saved them bodies that plan in this plane. Who knows? <clears throat> 